Now we've looked at arrays in a bit of detail, let's take a look at another useful data type, the hash. Whereas with an array, each of the elements is divided by using a numeric key, that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. With a hash, it's quite different. Instead of using a numeric key, we're able to use a string as a key for each element within the hash. So, for instance, if we wanted to know what the spice was in a certain recipe, we wouldn't want to have to work out what number in an array that piece of data was in. It would be better for us just to be able to ask for the spice element and receive the value back of turmeric. It's not that one data type is innately better than another, but they both have their uses that they're especially suited for. When we come to work with hashes within Perl, we need to put a percent sign at the beginning. Unlike the dollar sign that we use for a scalar context, or the at sign that we use to refer to an array. However, just like an array, when we're referring to one element within the array, we use a dollar sign at the beginning to show that we're moving to scalar context. We just want that one element. Unlike an array, instead of using square brackets to mark out the element that we want, we use curly brackets and we put the name of the key within quotation marks. This is how we initialize a hash. Some of it is very similar to the way in which we initialize an array. However, with an array, we just type out the values. The array works out the keys, that is the numeric keys, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, itself. With the hash, we're able to specify the names of the keys here. And because of this example, each of the key names is only a single word, we don't have to put quotes around them. However, if we wanted to use a key name for an element within the ingredients hash that had any kind of white space in it at all, we'd need to use some quotation marks to surround that so that Perl would be able to correctly interpret this initialization. Let's move over to our text editor now and have a look at some practical examples of working with hashes. We're going to set up a hash here called record artists and each of the keys is going to be the name of a record and each of the values here is going to be the name of a particular artist that, that created the record. You'll notice that I'm indenting quite a lot here, but there's no particular reason for following this, no programmatic reason I should say. The very good reason to indent like this is that it makes our code far easier to read. So when we're looking down the lines of a script that we wrote quite some time ago and we've been consistent in the way we've indented and we've left a lot of white space, it's a lot easier to read. Once again, because of the way Perl interprets different lines of code, even though this is spread out over six lines, Perl doesn't care until it hits a semicolon and then it goes, OK, now this is a new line of code. When we actually come to use the value within the record artists, we use once again the dollar sign because we're moving into scalar context. Then we use curly brackets followed by the name that we gave to the key. These operators here within the initialization of the hash are very important because they split the whole thing into key value pairs. Keys on the left, values on the right. 
let's save this as hash.pl and run our script at the command prompt. As you can see, it's correctly found the right element and has output the value back to the command prompt.